Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to walk you through a client case study and a data set and report that I built out recently that required some ID counts and also some start and stop dates. As you can see in the visual in front of you here, essentially as I'm selecting between the count of accounts from start date to end date, you'll notice that not only the visual, but also the slicer changes to show both historical and also future dates, depending on which metric I'm selecting. So it dynamically filters the visual and the slicers. They wanted to be able to have appropriate slicers to configure with this. Now, I do know that some of you are aware that you can do this in DAX, but I also wanted to see how I could leverage the relationships and natural filter propagation in the model to solve for this as sometimes leveraging some logic inside of a column or relationships instead of inside of the measure will actually speed up your calculations. So let's go ahead and explore some of these options, see what I did and hop into Power BI and get started. So I have three primary metrics that my client wanted to analyze. Accounts based on start date, account based on start date, but also the initial activity. So basically the first time an account actually opened and had a start and end date range, which is this count as well, and then accounts based off of their end date. So when these accounts are closing, what month are they closing in? Now there are two relationships that these are relying upon. There is the calendar date to end date, calendar date to start date. Now what I ended up adding is some extra things here at the top, the date mapping that you see here and the selection account tables. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just turn off this relationship for now to show you the problem that we were encountering and how the client wanted that to be solved. So without this turned on, if I was to select account start date, you'll see down at the bottom the prior year without any additional logic will continue to show because there is prior year data, but of course there's nothing to compare to. So now you're gonna get these negatives and all this other stuff. So we do wanna filter out the future periods and we would wanna do that both for start date and accounts initial activity. However, once I'm into the end date though, then I do wanna actually show the future periods into future years because accounts might be expiring in one to two years. So I can't apply a basic future and past filter to this page because something like that on the calendar table then would exclude my account end dates. So I want to, based off of these three selections, filter my calendar table, which would filter to the appropriate periods and to filter the visual below. So that solution, as I mentioned, was something where I built out a couple of tables and I'm leveraging a relationship into here that automatically is filtering that for me. So I'll show you how that was built, but you can see that at least with that turned on, my end date includes future periods, but then if I go to accounts initial activity or start date, it automatically is closing that window at the end of the period for all of the visuals and for the slicer up here based off of that relationship with the start dates. So showing you the tables over here, I'm gonna to go to the data view and I wanna start by showing you the selection account. Now this was a disconnected table that I created using the enter data button, where I basically created a slicer that was gonna be used on the page that allows me to select one of these three values. And it has a sort column just to make sure that this is sorted, but importantly, there is a key column. So it's either calculating account start date, accounts initial activity or end date. So taking a look over here at these measures, I'm gonna come up to accounts start date, that is a calculation that is just doing an account count using the relationship of calendar date to start date. Initial activity is just that single measure, but with one additional filter for that first period or cycle that that account ID existed. And then end date just leverages the end date. So we have initial activity and start date that leverage the calendar start date. End date would require the end date from there. And that is what is being keyed here. So key ID one, both anchors to the calendar start date essentially. And that's mapping from here to a many to many relationship with the key to type ID to this date mapping table that I created. Let's take a look at that on the data view. So my date mapping table, shrink this down a little bit. I'm doing a union here and I'm creating two tables right here. Add columns calendar min to max of the start date. So it's getting a date range between the min and the max start date from my accounts table, calling it type start date, type ID equals one. So we have, you can see, start date, end date here, and then there's that ID key between one and two that is mapping to these date ranges. So depending on my selection from that selection table that I built out, that is mapping down to here via the mini to mini relationship down to the type ID, and then that has a relationship propagating downwards towards the calendar table, which then filters the rest of it. So my calendar table gets automatically filtered, which means the axis and the slicer all automatically inherit those filters as well. So that's how it is passing down through that. And then I just have a simple selection measure that is also looking at that disconnected table and it's just returning one of three calculations in here. 
Now this can be done either through the enter data button as well. Alternatively, you do have some options if you wanted to, to potentially use the field parameters that are in preview as well. Both of those will give you that same table that returns the calculation that you're looking for to be able to propagate down this list. But I wanted to write these out more explicitly in the measures. So that's why I'm using the manual enter data button to create that table that I did and then just doing a switch statement inside of the measure. But very similar process could be done with the field parameters if you'd like as well. But that is achieving the effect with that turned on as we've seen relationship on following this all the way down. Now, as we select between our start date, our initial activity and our end date, it can include both past and future date periods via that filter propagation down without having to do any additional heavy lifting inside of the measure and allowing the model to do all the hard work itself, keeping the measure itself a lot more simple with less complexities related to date filtering or anything else that has to be applied per visual or per slicer at the visual filter level. And as you've seen from many of my videos, there's lots of different ways to design a model we could have done this potentially in DAX. I found that this solution allowed for a bit more simplistic and elegant measures to be written. And then again, leveraging relationships in the model, which in many situations actually can be faster than doing it in the measure itself, which has to be done in real time. So having all of that model already set up and maybe leveraging some relationships or sometimes even like a calculated column actually can go a long way to speed up a measure with adding just a little bit of model size. I have a couple thousand rows potentially in that date table, but that's not gonna be that much in terms of a file size storage. So it's very efficient at compression and storage and will lead to some faster measures. But I would love to hear if you have any opinions, thoughts, or alternative ways you might've approached this, drop that into the comment section down below. Let me know if you have any ideas for a future video. Don't forget to check out some of my related content here in the upper left. And otherwise, please feel free to like, comment, and share this video. It helps my channel grow. And as always, I will see you in my next video.